Hello and welcome back to Cracking the Cryptic. Now today we're going to take a look at a puzzle and this is one of my favourite uh, puzzles. It's, it's called a Nanro signpost uh, and it has some fairly simple rules but some really beautiful logic and we've covered um, a couple of these puzzles on the channel before so I'm going to put up a link uh, now on the screen so you can revisit uh, those earlier videos if you'd like a refresher. Um, now the puzzle today um, I was pointed in the direction of Robert Volmert's um, blog online where he publishes a lot of puzzles um, and Robert is one of the best uh, puzzle creators in the world so definitely worth a visit if you like uh, handcrafted puzzles and uh, this puzzle was recommended um, today so this is uh, let me show you it this is one of Robert's Nanro puzzles and um, we're going to take a look at the rules in just a moment um, but a piece of admin first, uh, the November reward on Patreon is now up. So those of you who don't know, we do have a, uh, a Patreon page um, where uh, some, some of you support us. And it's $2 a month uh, to do that and it's massively appreciated by both Mark and me. Um, and for your $2 you get some extra content so each month uh, we produce a puzzle for you and I have to say Mark created this this month's puzzle and it is brilliant um, so I solved it this morning and I, I think uh, I think you're really gonna like it if you like sandwich Sudoku you'll like it if you like clever tricks you'll like it um, and yeah two dollars a month to access that three dollars a month uh, gets you a video on how to solve it as well um, which I will make in the next couple of days. But as I say, the Patreon puzzle is up and running for those of you who are patrons. Um, now let's revisit the rules of Nanro signpost so that we can we can solve this. So we'll, we'll look at this example in a sec. That's going to be the easiest way of doing it. But we need to label some cells with numbers to form a single connected group of labeled cells. No two by two group of cells may be fully labeled. Each number must be equal to the total count of labelled cells in that bold region, and all bold regions must contain at least one labelled cell. That's more more complicated. That sounds more complicated than it is. We'll look at the example in a minute, and that'll explain that. Uh, the given numbers indicate how many cells are labelled in that region, but not necessarily which cells are labelled. When two numbers are orthogonally adjacent across a region boundary, the numbers must be different. So let's just have a quick look at this example and see if we can see some of the key principles for solving these. First thing to note is that all the white cells form a connected area. They are all orthogonally connected. Next thing to note is that where uh, this connection occurs across a region boundary, like with this four and this three, it must always be the case that these numbers must be different. That's absolutely crucial. Um, what else? No two by two area of white squares. You can see that this pattern obeys that. How would you go about solving this puzzle therefore? Well, the place that I think jumps out is these two threes in the center of the grid. If we know that the threes cannot be orthogonally connected, um, then it's not possible for both these cells on the right hand side of this square area to be included because if they were neither of these cells could be included and that would make the three clue here impossible because we know as it's a three clue there must be exactly three cells labeled with three in the region um, so that sort of gets you started that forces three into the bottom right of this funny sort of d-shaped area and then we start to get into the constraints of how does how do these three threes here get out how do they connect to the rest of the grid um, now, I've not solved Robert's puzzle before, um, so uh, I hope it's going to be a good one. It almost always, well, in fact, I've never solved a bad puzzle by Robert, so I'm sure it's going to be a great puzzle. And let's have a look and see how we do it. Obviously, as usual, if you'd like to have a go yourselves, just click on the link under the video and that'll take you to our software and you can have a, have a go. Um, so the first thing to note here, actually, is how pretty this puzzle is. You know, it's completely symmetrical. That's absolutely beautiful. Um, right, well, let's start with the easy places I can see. So these cells labeled four all contain exactly four cells. So we know that those must look like that. 
I'm going to use colors here as well, by the way. I'm going to use green to indicate that this, a cell must contain a digit. And I'm going to use red to indicate that it definitely doesn't contain a digit. So now we can't have a two by two area full of digits. So that's going to mean we can put some red cells in like that. Now with this two area at the top has only got two more cells left in it. So they must both be labeled two. And this cell must be green because otherwise this four area here can't connect to the rest of the green cells in the grid. So that one is going to have to be green. We don't yet know whether that's a one or a two. The area that this green cell is in is unlabeled at this point. So we're going to have to think harder about that. Looking down here, look, we've got f this three area is forced now. There's only three cells left. This square now must be uh, red because we can't have a two by two area. And ah, yeah, look, there's some fours here hitting another region labeled four. So we know there cannot be fours in any of these squares. All of those squares must be red. One, two, three, four, five five empty cells left in this four region so we can't quite resolve that yet ah but we can if we look at this green area this green area is sort of isolated it must this square cannot be a red square otherwise it will be completely isolated so that must be green and that must be green and that we know that that's part of a four region we know that's part of a three region so that's all looking Okay, now what would we do next? I don't know why I'm asking you guys. I'm not going to hear the answers, even if even if you're telling me. Um, ah, now actually, let's just go down here because I can see we've got two, three areas bordering one another. So if this square was a three, it would mean these two squares would have to both be red and that would break this region. So this square is not a three, it must be red and therefore these squares must be three. That means this square here can't be a three now. So again, we make a little bit more progress. And that square must be red to avoid the two by two rule. Right. Um, okay, we're probably running out of, well, this square must be, uh, this square is in a three region, so it can't be a three here because that would break the condition about there being threes across a boundary. So that square is red. Now this green area is isolated unless this cell is green. Um, right, what next? Um, well, I think I want to have a look at this region. This is a huge region and it's labeled one. So so what that means is that this area here and the green cells within it can only connect to the whole of the rest of the grid by bridging across one cell of this yellow area. So what does that mean? Well, obviously we've got ones here and ones here. So if we need a bridge, none of these squares can be in because if these are in it can't be a bridge because these squares would not be in so those are not allowed and as as again as this one is a bridge if this was the one it's not acting as a bridge because we can never get across to this square so that's not in either and it ah now hang on so this 
Now this bridge must come from one of the squares in the two. So the one must be orthogonally connected to one of these squares in the two. Now there's that one, that one and that one. Right, so the one is in one of those squares. That was me being a bit slow. So now let me look at this again. So this this is even more interesting now. Because this green area up at the top, obviously that has to connect to the rest of the grid. Now, if it comes down through here, then we know that it, that there is complete isolation because this one area can only be bridged once and if it's bridged here it will connect to this area but but this area is isolated and this top area is isolated so so the only way this area actually gets out is going to be it's got to come through that little gap there so all of these squares must be green, otherwise there is a problem. So this square is a 3, that square is a 4, that square is a 3. Oh yes, okay, right, that's fascinating. That is fascinating. So, I think... How do we get to that square from this 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 area at the top of the grid? The only way is if this square or this square is is green. If neither of these squares is green, obviously, let's just show you, we've got a massive problem. <laughs> you know, we can't get out at all. So one of these two squares is green, and that means because we've already got two cells labelled in our three area those squares must be red now this area this is lovely this is absolutely beautiful has to come out that way so that that square must be green um it must be green it must be a two this square must be green also um because it, it's the square that's going to connect to the threes And so what now? This square, as just, we can say a little bit, see these are two adjacent twos. If this square was in, the neck, because it couldn't breach the boundary, it would have to come up and it would be still be isolated. So that square is red. And the same is true of this one, look, because if this square is green, it's well, it's totally broken because it has nowhere to go. It's just simply isolated. That's just can't be in either. Right. So now how do it looks to me like we ought to now be able to resolve this top area because we've sort of we've got basically full information about it. So I just need to think harder to work out how to do that. Whoops. Um, douche. That, that. Yeah, this is get, this is really getting cluttered, because w watch what happens if this is a two. If this is a two, um, this square has to be in because this part, this this number here has to connect. Down, down somehow. So now this shape, this shape here, what number are we going to give this shape? We, we can't give it two because otherwise that isolates this number. If we make it a three, this number cannot connect to either of these squares. So it's not three. So it has to be four. But if it's four, that breaches the two by two rule. So actually this square can never be in 
this square is red, therefore this square is green. Cool puzzle, eh? Now, ah, now this is very interesting. So now this square has to be in. Ah, right, I see. This is, again, we can do the similar logic, but we're going to get to a better answer because that square's got to be in. We know this cannot be a three, otherwise it can't connect to one of these. So it must be a four, but this time it can be a four because we can avoid making this square um, a number. So this is all a four here. This square becomes red. This is all a three. This square, therefore, is red, and that should mean those two are two without breaking any conditions. Wow. Okay. This is a lovely, this is brilliant, isn't it? It's absolutely beautiful. Um, Now, I've, I think I'm getting the idea of this. So now we have to think about this area. So first thing we can note is that this part of the grid here needs to connect somehow down here. So we know there must be at least one of these green, of uh, these yellow squares must be a three because there needs to be a bridge to this part of the grid. So one of these needs to be a three. But we've got a similar thing going on with this square look. This three has to connect to the bottom right of the grid somehow. Now, the only way it can do that is either here or here. Is it because it can only go one cell because we know one of these squares is in. One of these squares must be in to get it to this square. So what does that mean? That means neither of those squares can possibly be in. Now, this square can't be this square can't be in because if it is that breaks the one is not acting as a bridge that means this square has to be the square through which this area gets out i mean isn't it amazing how you can make puzzles with this much intricacy in a 10 by 10 grid with a totally symmetric pattern it's it's just it's just gorgeous um Ah, now we can we can fix this now. Look, because if this square is in, then we can never get to across here using this one clue. So that square is not in. Therefore, this square is in. And now we still need to get to this square, and we just have enough room by making that square a one. So that's where we end up. And right. So we're honing in on a solution. We're not quite there yet. Well, let's have a think about this area. This can't be a four. If it's a four, then we have a two by two problem. It can't be a three because then it can't, this area can't get out. So this area is a one or a two. Now, if, if it's a one, what happens? If it's a one, if it's a one, it's broken. The whole puzzle is broken because which square am I going to select here to be my one? This one? Well, if I try that one, these squares have all got to be red. So now this square here is the only square through which this part of the grid can get out. And it's going to have to come like that. And that makes this region a three, which breaks the region boundary. So that's just that's just total nonsense. So the only other way that this three can get out is if this is the one. But that makes the same problem happen. Now these three squares have to be red. And again, these three have to be part of uh, a three cage, which they cannot be. So this region here is a two region. Ah, yes. Oh, no. I was about to say something that might have been wrong. I was going to say, as it's a two region, this has to be a one, but I'm not actually certain that's true. 
So if this is a two region as it, and it does that, oh, yeah, I think it is true. Because if, if this is a two region and this is a two region, you can see that because this is a two, these two squares would have to be in and these two squares would have to be red. And look, that breaks this again. This can no longer be a two region. It still needs to be a three region to get out. So does that matter? Uh, yes, it does definitely matter. It means that this is a two region and this is a one. Obviously, this can never be a three. So that fixes that. Now look, now look, yes. Ah, uh, let's just do this one here. This three now has to come this way because otherwise this whole right side of the grid is isolated. So this square has to be green and this square has to be green. And now I think we're done. I think we finished it now. That finishes the three region. That means this square is not the bridge. This is the bridge. Therefore, that must be a three. And it must be green. This square is red. This is all now connecting very nicely. Now, this must be a two, otherwise the area is isolated. And we're allowed one more of these to be green. And you can see it needs to be this one in order to allow the areas to connect. How clever is that? How beautiful is this puzzle? Now, we've got the four region up here. So we need two more cells, but this has got to be one of them. That's got to be the other in order to make those connect. So these two squares here must be four. And that means these two squares must both be, firstly, they must be in, and these two squares can be labeled two. And that, I think, let me just take a quick stare at it is the solution. What a beautiful, beautiful puzzle. Now, just to mention, some of you have noticed that if you click check on this, and I will, I'll show you now, it'll say this doesn't look quite right. The, region, the reason, oh my goodness, it goes completely crazy, in fact, is that um, uh, the, the, the reason it does that, ah, there we go, it is because it is built for Sudoku. So it is trying to see whether there's the numbers one to nine in every row, column and region, which of course there isn't. Uh, in due course, um, once um, uh, we deal with all of the other things we're working on on the website, we, we will introduce a better checker for uh, puzzles rather than Sudoku. But that's why you might say, oh, I got the same answer as Simon and it says, it, it says I'm wrong. That's the reason it thinks I'm wrong too. But we're not wrong and we have solved this puzzle. Thank you very much for watching. I really hope you enjoyed it. I thought that was an absolutely brilliant puzzle today and we've got some real treats for you coming up over the next few days too. So do keep an eye on the channel. Thanks for watching. Back soon with another edition of Cracking the Cryptic.